Hello and welcome to Heart of the Matter. My name is Dikwa Ayo Adeusi. And I'm Omotayo. And today... Yes, today. <laughs> I'm especially... I'm, I'm in bag of emotions, <laughs> actually. I'm excited, but I'm a bit nervous because the person we are talking to is a... Veteran. Heavyweight <laughs> in the industry. <laughs> like, commands a lot of attention and just charisma, respect. Yes, definitely. Body of work is <laughs> outstanding. It's and it's thank such you. an honor to have you here. Thank you. This is Ego Boyo. Thank you. Thank you thank so you much. So wonderful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, I mean, I don't know where to start from. Should we start from the beginning or should we start from <laughs> the movie that's about know. to come out? I mean, Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So thank best you. Um, Nigerian film, best actress, best, best director. director. Yes. Wow. And before then, we'd won in New York. Best um, wow. best feature narrative world cinema, that yes, at the Urban World Film Festival. And it just looks good. You look at the it trailer; does. it looks good. I have to say, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It does. Okay, you know, I actually want to start from really, really way back. I know okay. that like, way back is a long way back. It's a long, it's a long way. way. <laughs> but I feel like we don't get to hear the story. Yeah. Part of it, yeah. and that's what yeah. we really want to do on the House of the Matter. Like okay. beyond just that image of that glamazon, mm -hmm. we want to know like how did it actually start? How did okay. you end up in film and in yeah. the industry? Okay, um, I'll start from the beginning. So mm -hmm. I went to the University of Benin. Okay. I studied theater, but my focus when I was there in my third year, we started experimenting with um, film, mm -hmm. and I mean, I've always wanted to be involved in some way in film so it was brilliant for me and i really got into that side of things mm -hmm. you know the shoots the editing and all of that and so i focused my attention more on that than in than on acting surprise a lot of people are always like really yes mm -hmm. i did and um so for my final year my project everything was all about film and that was my focus then uh, fast forward, I finished school, came back to Lagos because that's where we lived and um, just trying to, you know, decide what to do. And then a lady I had met the year before, she was doing a documentary in the Supreme Court and my dad was in the court at the time. Mm -hmm. And he introduced us and said, well, this is the, fr uh, the daughter of a friend. She's shooting something. And I, hello. And then I dismissed it. But that year she came to see me when I go back from Benin and said, look, we have... Um, a pilot which we've done and we're hoping that it will be picked up and we want to know if you'll be interested and you know I just said oh yeah I would be and um, they came over to the house asked me to read a script I read it to them they said okay they'll get back to me weeks later they call and say okay you have the part are you interested and I was like okay I mean you finish school mm -hmm. no work at, the, right. at that moment so why that not well. yeah mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I said okay so I went on set, it was interesting. We did the shoots, met all these great actors. I was like, wow, 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 <laughs> you know? And um, that was it. So, you know, you do the pilots and then you don't know, is it gonna be picked up? Is anybody going to be interested? And then I went on to my life. I got a job as a youth corper. I was working in the Continental Merchant Bank at the time in the public wow. affairs department. And uh, that was good. And then they contacted me again. I said, guess what? It's been picked up. It's gonna be on NTA in a week or two weeks or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, the thing I did, you know that you did this crazy <laughs> no. thing yeah. and you didn't think anything was going to come of this. I then had to tell my bosses, you know, because I'm going to be on TV, so it's very out there, you know, and all of that. But they were so cool about it. He said to me, as far as the role is not anything scandalous, you know, uh -huh. the, you know, <laughs> it will be fine. And I was like, okay, great. So it was, we started. It was tough at the beginning because I had to then go in and do shoots. And um, sometimes I, I went off after work. We would shoot all through the night, you know, little breaks. And then I would get back. We should shoot in Ikorodu. Okay. I'll get oh, back wow. to Lagos about 6 a.m. And I had to be in, at oh, work, yes. oh, 8 a.m. Wow. But you know when you're young, you can do that. I yeah. was like, you know, it's fine. <laughs> yes. I'm living the life, you know. So I was doubting in and out. And it was good. 
and um, it caught on. We, was you could never mates? tell. Yes, that was checkmate. Check <laughs> you could never tell. You know how you do this show and you don't know what the reception is going to be. Gotcha. It was great. I mean, for pre-social media, before you know all of this, exactly. it was really good. It blew up very quickly, and people loved it. And so we went on, and um, yeah, it ran for five years. And then the company that was our major sponsor said they were no longer interested in, you know, the program. They were going in a different direction. So we decided, okay, look, Amaka, blessed memory, mm -hmm. said, I have another script which I've written for you and I want us to make a film. By this time, Living in Bondage had come out and that whole Nollywood start had, mm -hmm. you know, it was then. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, let's see it. Read the script, loved it, but I didn't want to play the part. I wanted to be the producer. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to act. And she was resistant at first. I found any number of actors to do it. And for some reason, it never worked out with any of them. They had other commitments or something came up. So I ended up doing that. But it was great because it was a very pivotal moment, not only in my career, but even in the industry, the sorts of films we were making, mm -hmm. the attention to detail, and also the fact that romantic films, dramas mm -hmm. were like the thing. Everybody was in love with love. <laughs> so yeah, that's so that's how it is. Now yes, living in bondage it's too. It's too is, yes, like a whole like yeah, a three sixty. Yeah. We've come back to where we started. Yeah, but that film yeah. you were talking about that was yes. violated. Yes, right? that was violated. Yes, <laughs> oh, <so good. laughs> yes, everyone loved it. It was like that moment, you know, that sort of changed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people had come on with living in bondage, but they were still a bit on the fence mm -hmm. because, of course, living in bondage at the time was in Igbo. Mm -hmm. So you still had a lot, a few people that were not really sold on it. Yoruba um, cinema, always big, because, of course, we'd had uh, Herbert Ogunde before and all of that. Mm. So it was English-speaking, romantic, set in Lagos, actors you recognize from Checkmates. Mm. Oh, <laughs> winning. It was a winning formula, yeah. So wow. that was it. And what, in fact, when you, you talk about, like, movies back then, and mm -hmm. obviously there's been, Nollywood has grown, grown. so much. Yes. And people, there are many people who still have that whole idea of like, oh, I don't watch Nollywood. Is yes, it yes. Me? But even then, and acting then mm -hmm. versus now, like how, how do you feel? Like I'm sure yeah. like those hurried shoots yes. that are just really quick and yes, everything yes, is just churned yes, out quickly yes. versus now. Yeah. And the production and the scale of it. Yeah. How do you, now that you've also now gone into production, yeah. how do you feel about the difference? Well, you see, in the productions I was in, even then, yeah. there was never a hurry. Mm -hmm. I, we never did all those shoots where you only shot for seven days. Never. Mm -hmm. I've never been on a production that shot for just seven days. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that feels. In terms of the process and just doing it properly, I've always been involved in that from my learning. And I learned a lot under Amaka, mm -hmm. who was the first person that I, I, who was the first director I worked with on Violated. So I've always been used to a certain process and how things are supposed to progress from pre-production to production to post-production and just taking my time, taking our time to get the different elements right. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, I wouldn't know because I've never done it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of scale, Validated was quite large. Um, again, we've moved with scale. Valise, it was large. Keeping Faith, which was my next film, and the first with Temple Productions. Yeah. <laughs> sort of my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, not even, Let's not even get into <laughs> that, right? You know, that was also quite large. Large scale in terms of the set, the, the cast, the crew was a large number. So I'm used to that scale right. and that depth of production. So it hasn't been like a strange thing for me. Mm. Um, I think the difference now would be more in terms of the equipment that we use. I think the technology mm. is so advanced. We were full clunky, umatic, yeah. carrying those <laughs> massive cameras and those incredibly hot lights. You know, when you say you're baking, <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, when you're in the studio like this, very gentle lights, you know, properly filtered. Mm. Then we were like, <sighs> you're panting because it's so hot, the lights were burning. So the technology has improved the equipment that we've used mm over time and now in that uh, in terms of equipment technology great um, in terms of scripting again I've always been involved in very good scripts being one of the key things that we focus on always been interested in making sure that our cast is tight mm -hmm. as in you choose these people because they will bring it 100% mm -hmm. they're professional they are great at what they do 
So that hasn't changed for me. So I can't um, relate. Right. Mm. So that's, you it's know. actually a good problem to yes, have. Yes, it's a good problem yeah. to have, exactly. <laughs> that's a good problem to have, yes. Yeah. yes. You mentioned that you, back in the day, which, yeah. I, you know, it's just so phenomenal that your parents mm. would let you study theater. Yes. yes. You know, um, but you did. And not only did you study theater, but you also decided to go the produ production True. track. Yes. As opposed to the acting track. Yes, yes. Or more so than mm -hmm. the acting. Track. Yeah. Um, what do you think about training now? Mm -hmm. You know, in this age of social media, yeah, where we yeah. have a lot of people who are getting jobs off of having mm -hmm. a lot of followers. Yes. You know, and sort of versus then versus now. Yes. You know, what do you think about that now? No, definitely there's a difference, and I'm not sure that it's great because I am very much uh, of the old school where, um, yes, talent is important. It's mm -hmm. good to have a an idea about what you want to do, but you need to train and understand. And I think that understudying somebody that is good at, if you don't have the chance mm. to maybe study it formally, being a great understudy to somebody that is doing the job that you want to do is also important. But I think that if you do decide that you're going to come out, for instance, as an actor, there has to be some level of training, of discipline. Mm. I was in the company of greatness yesterday. I met up in an event with Taiwa Jai Lysett, mm. who is, a, when you call me a veteran, I'm like, her. you don't even know what, yeah. that, that, she is a veteran yeah. veteran. She is, yeah. she's been in this industry. And she said one of the things that was in, in they just sort of knew, mm. it was taught them that you, it's not about you. It is about this gift that you're going to reveal and 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 show the world. Mm -hmm. You have to come from it from that place where you deliver on almost. It's all. It's just. A, it's a spiritual level. People think mm -hmm. the actors, oh, these people are playing, but for you to mm -hmm. take on this character and deliver, there's something. It's not a gift that everybody has, mm -hmm. and it's not. I don't think it's something that you can just treat in that very blasé way, you know, like, oh, it's just acting, we're just going to come and play. It requires a great deal of discipline. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the major things that I find lacking, that that discipline doesn't seem to be something that is translating. Mm -hmm. You're treating it like, you're not treating it like a profession or even a calling, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're treating it, when you say people are just, you know, you have certain numbers, people are watching you, therefore it qualifies you. Mm -hmm. You're belittling what we do, mm -hmm. how people train, how people prepare, mm -hmm. you know, and you... It's important because you can tell mm. when you watch, you know, if if you're if I'm playing myself, you know, instead that is the, it. Instead of the character, the character yeah. where you can just see ego every time you in every film is ego, 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 ego. Mm. Then I haven't done my job, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's amazing. We, it's, it, we actually have to go on a break quickly, yeah. but it's just interesting that you touched on that because I'm also thinking. I don't think we are as aware in the younger generation yeah. that just the fact that it was done and people are clapping for mm -hmm. you does not mean that it was done properly. properly yes. mm -hmm. And that's an interesting note. Yeah. Um, on that note, <laughs> we're going to go on a quick break. Please stay tuned. We will be right back. She left at four o'clock. Did she walk alone? She always does. Maybe she stopped somewhere. She's not home. It's been three hours. She'll be picking way happy. Yes, of course. She didn't run away. I know my own daughter. I'm not going to give up. I need to do something. Something that will bring her back. Welcome back to Heart of the Matter. We're still here talking to the phenomenal, effortlessly beautiful <laughs> Mrs. Egoboyo. And um, we've been talking about sort of like the differences between when you started in the industry mm -hmm. and what we have now. Yeah. Because you were active back then mm -hmm. and you are mm -hmm. active right now. now. So yeah. it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. And you can speak to these comparisons. So we're talking just a little while ago off camera about sort of the differences, especially in discipline with this, with the younger generation and mm. kind of understanding 
the real motive behind doing anything in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. because the entertainment industry is quite glamorous yes and it can be very misleading yes you know yes. for a lot of young people but yeah. what, what would you say to that i think you, what you've said is true it's it can be very misleading so people come into the industry and it's all about the glamour mm -hmm. and that's being a star yeah. rather than being an actor which is a working job mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um for those people the discipline the required discipline is always a struggle because they've come into it for the wrong reasons. If you're coming into it because you really love that and you love performance mm -hmm. and you feel that you have that passion and drive and you want to bring it forth, you require discipline to be able to, you have to sit in a place of, you know, almost silence, but silence helps mm -hmm. and sort of take your character in. I see people, you know, we're getting ready for, um, for the cameras to roll and they're just, <laughs> and then, you know, and then you're supposed to deliver this emotional or this very, you know, nuanced performance. Mm. How is that going to happen when mm. you, you're not prepared? I'm not saying that every actor has to have that process of, yeah. you know, separating themselves and taking right. the time. But it does help when you center mm. yourself in that, in that place and take in and think about what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to deliver. You know, I think it matters. Mm -hmm. And I've seen really great actors really prepare for those roles. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. And it works. You see it when they deliver. You're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody does something and you look at yourself and they're goosebumps. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. That is delivery. It's interesting because a lot of people critique the industry. Yeah. But they don't really know what they're critiquing. Yes. Yes. And as you're speaking, I'm like, that what yes, it is yes. it wasn't just reading the lines yes. or looking pretty it was we didn't believe yes. that yes. you were that person yes mm. and of course it there are a lot of other things that will contribute because of course when you have you know proper art direction mm. and all of that it helps to build that character in terms of the props around you and all of that but more than ever it is also what you as an actor are able to bring out sometimes you watch foreign films mm. Mm? And you say, oh, that film was rubbish. But this person, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Her mm -hmm. performance, his mm -hmm. performance, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will almost not criticize all the other little things that went wrong because of the performance of one actor or the other. That saved the whole thing. That saved the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that is what your job is. Your job is to portray this person so believably mm -hmm. that we don't remember who you are, mm -hmm. who you were before you walked on that set. Mm -hmm. You know? And we lose that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the development of the industry itself yes. now, mm -hmm. not just the um, roles, yeah. but the industry in, in itself, um, like movies that mm -hmm. we're making now, and it, it, well, we've come a long way. Now yeah. Nigerian movies are in the cinemas. Yes. There was a time I remember when Nigerian movies were not no, in the no. cinemas. No, no. It's a video. You know, but now they're in the cinemas, and you know, we hear these big numbers from you know big yeah. movies, but. Does it really translate, and, and how can we actually develop the industry um, mm. in terms of... Um, like actually generating yes, revenue. Yes, generating from revenue. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm aware yeah. that like a lot of money goes into it, and a lot of money comes out, but then it goes, there's a the cinema, there's the royalties, there's yes. all of that stuff yes. before it, before it even comes, comes down. to the producer. Yes. And now that you're in production so <laughs> intensely. <laughs> yes, yes. You're right. Um, the money is being made for sure. A lot more money can be made. I think one of the things we need is a proper distribution network that mm. will just work because the numbers are there. And if we had more cinemas in certain places, I know the Nigerians are cinema going people because they gather in small rooms That's to true. watch football, to watch Indian films. Mm -hmm. So if you're showing them good content that, you know, is relatable, they will want to watch it. Mm -hmm. They have embraced Nollywood, they love Nollywood, and we just have to keep giving them what, you know, we have to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. And we don't have enough cinemas. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough viewing. You know, it, can't, it doesn't even have to be a completely formal cinema structure. It can be an informal one. And those are doing very well outside of Lagos and outside of Abuja. Mm -hmm. They are doing well in the, smaller, in the smaller states. But we need more of them. We need to know that when you make a film, my film is going to go to 500 cinemas. Right. That way it gives you a better chance. Yeah. And it gives you the opportunity also to have larger budgets. Because if I have a larger sure. budget, hopefully my production call, uh, values will be higher. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be able to make money because I get into all those, you know, tiny, tiny places. Mm -hmm. So that when we do that division, as you, so, <laughs> yeah, as you rightly said, mm -hmm. the exhibitor takes their cut, the distributor takes their cut, and I, the producer, take my cut. Then my cut will be more, it will, it will make more mm -hmm. sense yeah. to me. Yeah. And it will mean more. Yeah. 
yeah. because it's a larger amount, yeah. you know, than all of us just struggling for the little, so, you know. Yes, but yes. in this moment, because yeah. now that we're not quite there yet, yeah. you have still gone ahead. Yes. And done, this is the <laughs> second one. You did Hotel Called Memories. Yes. And now Ghost and House of Truth. Yes. <laughs> How are you How? doing yes. that? Yes. Okay, doing so, that you, know? you know, the thing is, uh, we just can't stop. We're generating content. This is what we do. Mm. This is what we love to do. Sometimes the story comes to you mm. and it's like, I can't wait. Mm. Because sometimes there's stories that need to be told now. Mm. There are cinemas. They're not enough. I think now more than ever, the onus is on distributors and the exhibitors to make sure that the audience comes into the cinema. Mm. I've done my bit. I've created the premium quality content. Mm. It's for you to sell it. And selling it means making sure it gets to the right eyes. All those BRT buses, all those billboards, mm. all those flyers in hand. Get people thinking and talking about this film. Do your own little bit yeah. to promote the films that you have Nigerians making. We can still make a difference mm. with the little that, that we know. have. Mm. And the idea is that the more of that difference that we make, the more comfortable it is for investors to think, okay, I can give money to this person that wants to build a cinema. Mm -hmm. Because from the numbers I've seen, not only for foreign films, but for Nigerian, Nigerian films, films even, they will make money. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, let's go to The Ghost and the House of Truth. Yes. What was the process? First of all, how did you get the story? How did, like, how did it come together? Okay, mm -hmm. so um, I, as you said, I'd done um, a Hotel Called Memory with Aki. Hotel Called Memory, silent, experimental, it was always going to be a festival film. Yes. We're going to travel with it, we're going to show it to a few select audiences, but for us the main thing was festivals. Mm -hmm. We toured, we got a few awards, and we made the point. That film was shot with two crew, a camera, a DOP, and a director. We didn't do any lighting. We didn't have any sound. It was all natural light. Oh. We used all natural light. Hello. And Wait, cause yes. I actually saw this film. Um, yes. Um, I'm thinking about like those beach scenes yes. and the different locations, it was all and it's like natural light. Wow. We didn't use one light. It was all natural. So you know those sorts of films are actually the sorts of films that people start their careers shot at on. Night. Yes. Yes. Outdoors. And didn't you see? Yes. But you know, like all the places we shot, for instance, the party. Yeah. Party was very lit. Yes. It was very well lit. Yeah. The rooms in the night were dim, but that's how the bedrooms were supposed to be. Right. Bedrooms are supposed to be dim. You need to understand the equipment and how it works, mm -hmm. how it can deliver for you what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, Akin was very specific about the camera that he needed to use to mm -hmm. achieve that effect. And it works best with little or no light. Mm. So that's why it works. Yeah. Aki and I had said we would work on maybe two or three films together. We had done a hotel called Memory and we're looking at the next project. And he brought this script to me. It was written by South Africa, two South African men. And it was about, you know, this office of reconciliation and a counselor whose daughter goes missing. And I said, you know what, this film can work perfectly in Lagos. Mm -hmm. The only thing is we started talking about it and we thought, you know what, we're going to Instead of having a policeman, let's have a policewoman and let her be pregnant. You can see she's pregnant in it. Although people keep thinking it's traditional police with a pot belly. <laughs> yes. No, it's actually not. It's like that. Everybody's like, ah, this is real police. He has a pot belly. No, 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 no. It's a pregnant police officer. She was pregnant and the theme was this um, child who goes missing. And we felt that, yes, a male police officer could have come across in a certain way, mm -hmm. but a female comes across in a totally who's different way, pregnant. who's also pregnant. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing mm -hmm. with a mother, honestly, yes. very layered. You're dealing with a mother who's lost her child. You're expecting your own, oh my mm -hmm. God, the empathy, the feelings that you will be getting, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why we did. How yeah. long did it take to, to the entire process? How long um, was that? Well, it's been two years. Wow. Yes, we started in 2017. Did our post, uh, our pre-production 2017. We did our shoot January. We shot for, I think it was 28 intense days. Mm -hmm. We shot in Yaba and, and Makoko. And then um, pre uh, post-production and all of that took us almost a full year. Yeah. You, so, I think two we, years. We need to repeat that. How long again? <laughs> almost a full year. Almost a few, guys, almost yes. a full year. Yeah. Wow. That is, it's very lost. Yes. By yes. and large, yes. people don't take 
time. Oh, I watched this film maybe 15 times before you see the cut that is in the cinemas mm. on Friday. And every time it changed because mm. there were certain things you focused on. There were certain shots that mm. you now found. Mm. I'll give you an example. In a hotel called Memory, there's a scene, I don't know if you remember, of horses yeah. on the beach. Yes. Okay. Now, everybody that watches it, they say, come, no, please, I want to know. How did you push through that? Mm. It was purely by chance. We were shooting on the beach. You know there are no animal actors. You know for sure there are no <laughs> animal actors in Nigeria. Please, no, 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 we're no. not there yet. So we're shooting on the beach, and there are horses. You know there are always horses on mm -hmm. the beach. And they're just walking. And then two horses now get into something like a tussle, like a fight. And one, it, one is pushed over, and the camera guy just swung his camera and started recording it while he was waiting. So it was one of those shots you don't know what you're going to do with. And then in the film is that tussle between Lola and her husband. Mm -hmm. She's trying to reassert herself, and you just put that scene in, and people's minds are blown. Mm -hmm. You see, if you rush through everything, there are mm -hmm. certain things you will never capture. Mm -hmm. There are certain things you will never see. Mm -hmm. But I do think that time is, is good mm -hmm. in the making of a film. Mm -hmm taking your time to get the right scenes, even get the right performances. Mm -hmm. If you rush your actors through seven days, how will you know when that person... It takes some people seven days to get into character. So by which time we've stopped shooting. Then mm -hmm. I'm in character, we're no longer shooting. <laughs> I mean, then, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think it takes time. But what's happening in our industry right now is obviously, mm -hmm. like you said, because there's not, there's not enough... And enough cinemas, there's not yes. enough money. So people yeah. are just rushing. Yes. We're trying to use yes. better equipment. equipment. To, to yes, cover it, compensate yes, for it. Compensate yes, for yes. it. But, well, I don't know that it's working. It's not well, perfectly. Yeah. It's working yeah. Yeah. in but some instances, perfect. but not as perfectly as we could. And yeah. we have such a great opportunity because everybody loves Nollywood. Yeah. And I'm not just talking Nigerians alone. Yeah. I mean, all over the world, yeah. where it's a buzz. Yeah. And we've created that buzz. So we have that opportunity now to take advantage and just give them our best. Yeah. And we can. Is that whole, you know, I hate to say it, but is that Nigerian, you know, that whole Nigerian mentality of it's just okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Joe. Ah, it's, it's not, yeah, let's manage it. It's, it's, not, it's great. So remember where we're coming from. Mm. Mm. Nice. I love the fact that yeah. um, you, are, you are not just talking, because I'm, I'm trying to get away and, and you know, I, even on the show, we try to get away from just complaining about what's yes. wrong yeah. and trying to get people on mm -hmm. who are actively yeah. changing, changing the narrative, yes. which you are. Um, but do you think there's going to be a point where you actually start to package these gems that you've learned over the years and things that you've known mm. to give them to the next generation in terms of like teaching or yeah. training? Yeah. Oh, no. like the people will be like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm first <laughs> on the line. You are so right. <laughs> and yesterday when I was listening to um, Miss Ajayla, I said, I thought, you know, these people are people that we should, you know, have some sort of, you know, masterclass series. I hate that word because it's so overused, masterclass. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of another word right now. But a series of things that mm -hmm. so everyone at different points in this industry that have great gems to share. And we've had some fantastic people. Yes. There's some filmmakers that are very quiet right now, but they are fantastic. The work they've done in the past, mm -hmm. the things they're working on under G, mm -hmm. I guess it's coming. I hope it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good. So... I would love to do that. Whatever I have learned, I would love to, you know, put it out there for whoever can learn from it. I mean, that, I think that's the best thing that we can do. All right, so before we go, yeah. let's talk about how people can see Ghosts and, and the House, House of, of Truth. Truth okay, can't yeah, you can't. It's such a great film, even though, yeah, I'm the producer. <laughs> it really is, it really is, and the story is marvelous. November 22nd, it hits the cinemas nationwide. So whatever cinema is near you, I bet you, you will have the Ghost and the House of Truth there. Mm -hmm. So please go out, support, because as you heard, we need that support. Mm -hmm. So please buy tickets, grab your friends, your family, can just everybody, go. your everybody. enemies, everybody. Enemy, everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody, just go and watch it. Yeah, yeah. great. Thank, oh, you. thank you, thank you so, so much. much it's coming. lovely talking to you, both. It's lovely talking to you, too. Yes. I feel like I'm there. I'm just going to be greatness. thinking about this for yes, a long time. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank all you. All right. Well, that is all we have for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please join the conversation on our social media platforms. We are at HOTM TV on Instagram and Facebook, and we are HOTM channel on YouTube. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye, guys.